Joining me uh, here, getting ready for the real news in just a little while, is Buck Sexton, a guy who understands the Middle East and is getting it right time and time again. Tell me what the latest is in the Middle East. Uh, Syria has turned into a launch pad now for global jihad. They haven't launched cross-border attacks yet really beyond the what you could say would be sort of the Iraq Syria theater of operations now, but it's combined. So all these insurgents, all these avowed jihadist Al Qaeda guys from Iraq, including the hundreds, by the way, who were just released from prison, just released from Abu Ghraib, those are some of the worst of the worst. Guess where they're going? If they're not staying there to cause trouble in Iraq, which they may be doing, they're heading right across the border into Syria. They view this as the next major front in the global jihad. There is a call going out across the world on all the internet chat rooms everywhere. This is where they think the black banners of Khorasan will go, and then eventually of course, they find their way into Jerusalem. So the whole Assad civil war thing, that's becoming increasingly secondary to this is now the major front for jihad. So what's happening with Assad? Assad is trying to hold on as best he can. I think the most likely situation is that at some point, right now people are saying he has the momentum, but that will probably turn, especially as more and more of these foreign fighters from outside the region or from uh, nearby Arab countries find their way into the conflict. Uh, Assad is really just one bad day away from a lot of this starting to turn against him militarily. They managed to get a couple of suicide bombers very close to his inner circle early on in the conflict. If they do something like that again, which I think they will at some point, then you may have Assad all of a sudden retreating to essentially the Mediterranean coast. This country gets split. Al-Qaeda doesn't need to run the whole country. They want to do what they did in Iraq, which is when they declared the Islamic State of Iraq. While we had the U.S. occupation there, they'd like something similar, and they're already starting it. They're already setting up the Sharia courts in northern Syria and closer to the Iraqi border. Uh, they want a, a cross-border. I mean, th this right here, Glenn, on the, on the screen, that is what was declared. That section there is what was declared as the Islamic State of Iraq by al-Qaeda in Iraq around 2006, 2007, right to the left of that, if you were to go to the west, that portion of Syria, mm -hmm. that is what they're hoping at some point they'd like to declare that to be the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or the Islamic, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And so right that's where they're heading. And right above that is Turkey. That's right. Right, okay. right on that border is Turkey. I just, this week, I just did um, uh, an event. I did the keynote for Kufi, the Christians United for Israel, and I met with the um, ambassador of Israel to the United Nations. And um, they're alone. I mean, they are just absolutely alone. The difference I, I saw in Israelis um, here now compared to even a year ago, let alone two years ago, is they, pretty, they thought they were alone last time. There ain't nobody blowing a whistle for them. There's, no, there's nobody holding up the Is, Israelis or Middle East Christians, both, really. Yeah, I assume we're right. right, yeah, right. on both sides of this. Well, look, during, during the Iraq war, the Christian community in Iraq, which was about 1.6 million, they estimated, before uh, the, the second war, before our second invasion, uh, is now dwindled down to a couple hundred thousand. And it was very underreported. And when people would raise this issue, they would say, well, we can't specify any help to the Christians in Iraq because that would look like favoritism. It would play into the Crusader narratives. So, so we left them out to dry. 1.4 million beforehand? About 1.4, 1.6 in that neighborhood. And yeah. now there's 200? A few hundred thousand. A few hundred, a few hundred what, what thousand. Ha what happened to the others? Uh, they fled to neighboring countries. Some of them fled to Syria, by the way. Uh, they fled to neighboring countries. Um, they, some of them got asylum in the West, and a lot of them got killed. We'll never actually know the full amount of numbers. They assassinated the Archbishop, uh, Archbishop Rajo in Mosul, uh, who's a very prominent Christian leader. I mean, they assassinated an archbishop. This wasn't even reported in this country. And you see this now with the Coptics in Egypt. Everyone's always afraid if we help them, it'll look like the Western Christian Jewish crusaders are in there playing favorites, so let's just sort of leave them out I, you to know, dry. I, I, I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe that's our motivation. Well, we don't want to help them. I don't believe that for a second. That's the public excuse. Yeah, that is the excuse. We are on the wrong side. We are on the wrong side. I mean, I, I don't see, um, I don't see our, our, our president standing up for Christians, unless you're a Christian like Jeremiah Wright. He's not going to stand up for Christians. He's, he's telling Christians like the Catholics exactly how to live their lives. We're so on the wrong side that it's become apparent this administration doesn't really realize which side they're supposed to pretend they're on at this point. Uh, they've slowed delivery of F-16 fighter planes to this new interim Egyptian government but they don't really want to cut it off entirely because then it will look like, oh, I guess it really was a coup, which we all know it was a coup. Uh, they're not even sure which side of this they're supposed to be playing at this point. There's a deadline looming. This thing could turn violent very quickly in Egypt. It's already as violent as it could possibly get, really, in Syria. Uh, this is what we're looking at, and we are nowhere to be found. Glenn. Hey, Billy Crystal, not, not the funny one.
<laughs> the really funny one in Washington, you're a moron. And so are many of those in Washington that went along with this in the Middle East. We're in trouble, know what side you're on.